MiHoYo just announced two new artifact sets. Are they worth your raising? Are they even the best for any character? Let's start with the Geo one. Nighttime Whispers in the Equing Woods. This set provides plus 18% attack on the 2-piece bonus, and for the 4-piece, after using an elemental skill, the character gains 20% Geo damage bonus for 10 seconds. While under a crystallized shield, that effect is increased by 150%. This extra damage ends 1 second after the shield is lost. And by the way, this set's wording is similar to others already in game. The 150% refers to 20. So 150% of 20 is 30%, meaning that it gets a total of 50% Geo damage bonus when fully used. So our requirement is not that simple. We need not only to get a crystallized shield, but also maintain it for as long as the character using this set is on field 4. Now of course, this is clearly a Navia set and she can use it very well as her mechanics help her collect crystallized shields. She also probably has quite a short damage window in which maintaining the shield should not be too hard. But what about the other Geo units? Let's first throw away a few units that just do not need this like Goro and Yunjin. You could use it on burst supports only, like shielding, picking up the crystallites and then using the burst, but I would be very against farming it for him and supporting sets are generally better for most of his teams. Albedo, Ito and Noel have plenty of good options and are able to make a great use out of the husk set which just requires them to do some hit or stay off field a while to fully stack it, without a care for crystallized shields. I wouldn't recommend this on them at all, even though it probably wouldn't be that bad. 50% Geo damage is 50% Geo damage. And here we come to Ningguang, the only Geo character that is still very much forced to use 2 piece 2 piece options for the lack of full sets that synergize well with her. Now, yes of course, since Furina, and only with Furina, she is able to use Marichu C, but not that many other options are available to her. This new set will still be a bit awkward, but it's fully used and even when the crystallized shield is not up, it's technically close, if not better, than the other options. It might still sound weird to play with Ningguang, but remember how her kit and rotations usually go. She already wants to start with an elemental skill, and she actually kind of wants to move right after. Passing through her shield will grant her 12% geo damage. With some luck, the crystallized shield will be somewhere around there, and doing both at the same time will reward a simple dash with 42% geo damage. That's almost an extra goblet main stat. For maintaining your crystallized shield, well, it comes down to how you play her. A C6 burst DPS Ningguang can technically just come online to skill into burst, skill again into a charger attack, and then just switch off. In a rotation like this, but even without the C6, you will be able to buff your burst and keep the crystal lights intact thanks to its eye framing. The extra skill cast or charger attacks will leave the crystal lights shield vulnerable to being broken, but the one extra second of the set effect might help out. By the way, we are assuming the worst here. We are assuming that the shield actually gets destroyed in one hit and that it's not possible to simply pick up more. Of course, the less we have to move and the more we focus on just dealing damage with the full effect on, the better it is. For an Ningguang that plans to be on field driving a team for a long time, it might become trickier and really dependent on which content we're facing, but let's be real, that's not the dream scenario for her. You want to unfield Ningguang for as long as she has skill and burst ready. Any more than that is usually not ideal as her DPS lowers quite a bit after that. Last thing to remember when using the set, regardless of the character, is that shields do not stack. You can have multiple, but they all get damaged at the same time. If you ever had in mind of protecting your crystallized shield with another shield, note that it does not work. If you take 60 damage with a shield for 50 and a crystal light shield for 50, you will just destroy both and take 10 damage anyway. Of course, they have extra absorption to their element, but crystal light shields are assumed a very low, if not zero, elemental mastery, which means they will tank something around 1700 damage depending on your level, which is like nothing compared to how much anything in the abyss hits for. Also keep in mind that they protect you from actual damage they would deal to you, which means if you have high defense, your shields can tank more. But that is not the case for Ningguang, which actually has one of the lowest base defense in the game. One last thing to remember about the new set is obvious, but keep in mind that you need either Pyro, Electro, Cryo or Hydro to actually get a crystallized shield going. You could rely on your enemies as well in certain scenarios. I think that this set is overall not worth farming, but if looking to really maximize Navia or even Ningguang, you could go for it. The set is paired to Song of Days Past, a new healing set. The 2-piece option will provide 15% healing bonus, 
Buckle up for the four piece, cause it's a long one, but I'll try to make it super easy to understand. When the character using the set heals anyone, the healing will be recorded, overflowing healing included, and up to 15,000. After 6 seconds, 8% of the recorded healing will transform into a damage increase buff that can be used by the active character. This effect will disappear after 5 total hits or 10 seconds. The way this damage is calculated is most likely very similar to Shenhe or Yunjin buffs. First of all, 8% of 15,000, which means fully stacking it in 6 seconds, is 1200 damage. This 1200 would be an additive damage bonus. What that means is that in the damage formula it will still get multiplied by things like damage percentage and crit. It will likely never actually be 1200 but way more. Unfortunately, in the 6 seconds the set records your healing, it does basically nothing. So the best scenario for this set is to start healing as soon as possible and after 6 seconds let the character with the most buffs and damage potential be the one consuming your stacks. See how it's similar to a Shenhe skill, the downside having to wait 6 seconds and having to heal, the upside being for almost any instance of damage. The only real question, does this set provide more compared to things like Ocean Heat Clam, Noblesse or Tenacity? Let's first address the fact that if your healer can run Noblesse, Tenacity or Veer Distant Linearer and their effects are well used by the rest of the team, then this new set simply does not compare and should probably not be considered. Being able to buff the entire team for 20% attack or 40% rest shred is so much more than what Song of Days Pass will provide. But let's say you already have those sets or the healer you're using is not that great at using them. Let's take an example of a fully built Ayaka with Blizzard and Kazuma in a Freed's team. Ayaka has good artifacts but nothing crazy. In the example I used in my calcs, the set buff will go from 1200 to 6100 damage per stack. Multiplied by 5 stacks, we're basically getting 30,000 extra damage on Ayaka's attacks. This will take 6 seconds to form, provided enough healing of course, and depending on which part of our kit is used, even just a couple of seconds to deliver. And by the way, these are actual numbers expected on the enemy, which means they are very comparable to Ocean Heat Clam, which can do something very very similar in terms of numbers for this example. But does not have this kind of time-gated setups where you have to heal for 6 seconds, then deliver the hit. It also procs way more, being every 3.5 seconds. So we can tell that MiHoYo is being very careful in making these two sets actually very similar in a way. What we left out of the picture, however, are reactions. Additive damage bonuses like the one provided by this new healing set not only get multiplied by damage percentage and crit, but also by amplifying reactions. Let's say my carry is getting this set's buff and triggers a vaporize or melt. That 6000 we had is now receiving a further buff. All in all, this set is absolutely nothing but a side grade compared to Ocean Hued. It is kind of awkward to use because of its timing and it only shines with tons of buffs and very good builds. It does require, however, also less healing. There will be situations where one or the other will be better. There will also be situations, especially with non-attack scalers, where your healer maybe just doesn't have a good set to use anyway. Think of a Baiju in a Novila team. If Dendro damage is not a big portion of your damage, you're left with almost no option. You can't use Noblesse nor Tenacity, so you're left using Ocean Hued Clan. But a character like Novilette and a steady healing like the one from Baiju actually turn out to be very decent for this new set instead. In all honesty, I don't think there is a single character where you really want or need to farm this, but again, it can prove useful when old conditions are met, and especially the timing. Often teams have buffs given to a single character that however will be on field for a given amount of time, and often that is not ideal to something that takes 6 seconds to stack. Now you need to always be thinking about your rotations and try to avoid ending up in the scenario where the effect triggers but you are not on your quote unquote main carry. So I don't think these sets are that great and if you're not that much into Navia, which can probably use other options, then I think this domain will be a skip for most of the community. I'm starting to see a pattern in MiHoYo's releases. New region with new super good artifact domain, into a second one super specific and a third one even more specific and hard to justify. I really hope to be proven wrong by any of the new characters that might end up using these sets better. I have in plans a couple of Navia videos and maybe a Ningguang one if enough people want it. Let me know what you think of 4.3 and if you have any requests for future content.
I stream on twitch.tv slash 7evenpleaseeveryday. Come and say hi if you want. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.